I want to tell you why G-Sync variable refresh is a difficult problem and what are the innovations that we've come up with at NVIDIA to solve those problems. The, the first fundamental limitation of virtual of variable refresh is that every panel has a minimum refresh rate. Below that refresh rate, the panel cannot sustain an image. So at less than that refresh rate, you'll see like things like flickering or color inaccuracies. But the problem is that this is how real games work. The frame rate moves all over the place. Now we have a choice at NVIDIA. We could have said, look, at less than the minimum refresh rate, we're going to shut off G-Sync. That would be simple to do. But then gamers would see things like tearing and stuttering, which is exactly what G-Sync is supposed to solve. So we actually offer G-Sync that works all the way down to zero FPS. There is no minimum limitation. But how do we do that? Let's say, for example, the minimum refresh rate for a panel is 30 FPS or 30 Hertz. And let's say the game is running at 20 FPS. What G-Sync does is it runs the panel at 40 Hertz, so twice the FPS, and it doubles the frame, it repeats the frame twice. So it's showing that 20 FPS frame twice and running the refresh rate at 40 Hertz. That way we are always above the minimum refresh rate. And that works all the way down. Suppose the game was running at 10 FPS. <coughs> then the refresh rate of the panel would be 30 Hertz and the frame would be repeated thrice. But that's happening seamlessly across the entire range of FPS. The gamer can't tell the difference as it moves from zone to zone. Now that's just one example of a display technology that we had to innovate around to get variable refresh to work. Another great example is overdrive. Getting the color right on the in the game display is actually all about timing. So let's say, for example, if a particular LCD pixel was at a gray one color, and say it needed to move to gray two before the next frame began, what the panel does is this: it applies a voltage to that pixel such that pixel is actually going to move to gray three. And in the course of moving to grade 3, it gets to grade 2 before the next frame begins. That's how you hit your target color. But this problem becomes very difficult to do with variable refresh because now your frame rates are changing, which means that the time that the pixel has to respond is also changing from frame to frame. To solve this problem, we've come up with something called variable overdrive. And what it is, is this, you know, in the background of the game, we're running some fairly sophisticated heuristics to predict what the frame time is going to be for each pixel. And based upon that prediction, we are applying a, an overdrive value, which we've calculated ahead of time. And that way, users never see things like ghosting or, or blurring at the edges of fast moving objects. All these innovations, be it variable overdrive or uh, no minimum refresh rate, all of this happens at no cost of performance or latency. Some announcements, we are announcing a couple of new features uh, from Computex onwards, one of which is windowed mode G-Sync. Right? So you can play your game in a window, and this is frankly what I have done in the past, is I want to refer to some entry online regarding uh, a scene I'm stuck in or, or a boss I'm fighting. And now you can run G-Sync in this window and you can still go back and refer to an, uh, a website online or you could chat with your friends on a chat client and you'll still have G-Sync running in the active game window. Uh, a second announcement around G-Sync is the way G-Sync used to work is at the maximum refresh rate of the panel G-Sync would move, would default to V-Sync mode, right? So once you hit, say, 60 Hertz, say if that was your maximum refresh rate, you would get V-Sync mode and you didn't have a choice. But for extreme gamers, even 10 milliseconds of latency is important. So for from that perspective, we've now offered 
an option to turn vSync off at the max refresh of the panel. And it's a choice gamers have now. We are introducing G-Sync for notebooks, which is for the very first time, there's gonna be a variable refresh rate solution on notebooks. So how did we make this work? It's interesting. Uh, and I'm sure you guys will have questions around this as we talk through the, you know, the technology. So let me get started. In desktops, the way the display pipeline works is this. The GPU sits in the, in the tower. That drives a scalar chip which sits in the monitor. So what is a scalar chip and why do you need it? Now, every monitor has a native resolution. Let's say 1080p. But the monitor could accept video signals from a range of different sources which might be generating signals at different resolutions. The scalar converts the incoming display signal into the local resolution of the panel. And then it drives those signals onto the uh, a timing, a TCON chip or a timing controller of the panel itself. But to make this work for G-Sync, we actually had to change the entire pipeline. So the GPU itself now has dedicated hardware which guarantees that there's never going to be a performance penalty when you run G-Sync. We have to replace the scalar chip with a G-Sync module. And that is really because the, G -Sync, the scalar chip works at a constant refresh rate. So to support a variable refresh rate, we had to create our own version of the scalar. And since we were doing that, we could do a lot more. So the module actually does things like variable overdrive. So you don't see ghosting anymore. It's got, techno it's got stuff built in, which guarantees that you don't have minimum refresh rate problems. So it's, it's doubling and tripling your frame rates as need be. And we have a fairly stringent process to approve panels for G-Sync. We, we get a, a, a range of different panels to validate. And frankly, we only approve a fraction of those panels because we check for things like the panel should not have flicker. It should not have color inaccuracies. It should support variable overdrive. And that's really how we get G-Sync to work in, in desktops. But the picture changes for notebooks. And the main difference is that notebooks don't have scalars in them. You don't need scalars because a notebook will only drive itself. You, you don't have a DVD player, for example, sending video signals into a notebook panel. So you don't need to scale the resolution. So all that intelligence we talked about, be it variable overdrive, or be it the frame rate doubling, tripling, or even some anti-flicker technology, all of that is built into the GPU. And as part of our panel validation process, which is the same, uh, I guess a good thing that a good consequence of our panel verification process is that we now have 75 hertz gaming notebooks, which is for the very first time you have notebooks at that high refresh rate, and I'm sure gamers would love that. So come June first, uh, we're announcing G-Sync notebooks on all the top gaming notebook platforms. These G-Sync notebooks, and we have all of these guys behind there for demo purposes, but they are all available at different resolutions, be it uh, 1080p, 3K, or even 4K, different display sizes, both 17 and 15 inch, and we also have them in an SLI configuration. That's right here. Um, along with notebooks, we are also announcing seven new G-Sync monitors. And this really completes our product portfolio. They are available at different sizes, resolutions and refresh rates. But there is one in particular I want to call to your attention. That's the X34 from Acer. It's 34 inches at 4K resolution, curved ultra wide and it's really fantastic. Uh, so there you have it. You know, uh, G-Sync is a premium solution that we are very proud of. It offers certain technologies that we can claim exclusively uh, are supported in G-Sync. Things like, we don't have a minimum refresh rate. You never see ghosting with G-Sync because we have variable overdrive. We support SLI. You can also play G-Sync in a multi-monitor configuration. So for those folks who play uh, surround gaming, you can hook up three monitors and have G-Sync running on all of them. 
We also have endowed mode support if you only want to support this.